Welcome to a crash course in English grammar for slow on the uptake aliens and for kids with low grades. We're specializing today in the naming of tenses, which some might seem to be a rather boring exercise, but if you name something then you can discuss it and talk about it. And many people, many pupils get very confused about the naming of tenses and therefore they can't follow explanations. And if you name a tense then it clears the mind as to how you can use verbs. So here we have Cosmo from somewhere in outer space. He's having trouble with the immigration authorities as a a non-resident, as, as a resident alien. We have Jacques from France. Hello, please to meet you. And we have Mechthild from Germany. Freut mich sehr, eure Bekanntschaft zu machen. And the Dalai Kama. Just want to learn more English. Very interesting. Hello, everybody. This is Sergeant Major Ernest, don't mess with me, Watson. And it is my uh, duty today to uh, give instruction on the question before us. There are indeed uh, rather complex uh, tenses in English. I'll give you an example. What have you been doing? Where have you been going? But don't worry too much. Remember that there are only four basic tenses to take as your base. The present, the past, the future, and the conditional. And there, present in the first position of any uh, tense formulation. And for the purposes of uh, convenience, these will be marked as red. So before you look further, just see the first verb and you'll know whether it's present or past, future or continuous. And whatever follows cannot change that fact. That is absolutely clear from the start. Then you have to consider combinations, whether it's a perfect tense or continuous, progressive, whether it's passive. But don't forget, the basics are the four tenses, like there are four seasons of the year. Thank you. Let's have a look at this chart of the four basic tenses I've spoken of. The present, examples, goes, is, have, do, does. Past, examples, went, did, had, were. Future will, conditional would. Always look at the first verb in any tense formulation. I have finished the job. The first verb in red, as you see, is have, present. Finished, in this case, is after the first position and has no bearing on the four tense indication. However, in the second case, I finished it yesterday. In that position, it indicates the past. Would is uh, conditional. Would you like a cup of tea? And they will arrive later. Will is future. We now come to consider the simple tenses, so-called present simple and past simple. I live in London. We have no problem with combinations because uh, there's only the verb live that is in the present simple tense. Do you drink tea? Do in the red or first position indicates the present simple. John drives a BMW of course, with um, he, she, and it, uh, an S is uh, 
placed on the end of the verb in the present simple tense. On the right, they have a lot of work, and where are the children? In both cases, it is the present simple because have and are have no function as auxiliary verbs, as we shall get to know them later. In the past simple, an example, Julius Caesar became so powerful that the defenders of the Roman Republic decided to kill him. He did not take a soothsayer's warning seriously. In a list of irregular verbs, the past is in, usually in the second position. With a regular verb, it ends in uh, ed. If you need to form a question or make the negative, then you apply did, but the verb itself is in the infinitive, because did in the first position has already indicated the tense. Uh, in other cases we see we all had a great time yesterday where were you on Monday had and were have no auxiliary function and would then be past simple of course with were there is no function for did where were you we now come on to the question of combinations. Uh, you will see on the next chart, on the first line, have, has, or had, plus the past participle, examples, gone, being, said, jumped. This combination forms a perfect tense. To be in any of its forms, is, am, are, was, were, been, itself dependent on have and has, combined with the present participle, that is the form with ing, forms the continuous or progressive class of tenses. In the cases before us, we have I have bought, we know that have is at the present, it's a red verb, the first verb, present, and bought is perfect. In other words, we have present perfect. He is, is, is in red, here as an auxiliary verb in the present, combined with working we have the present continuous or the present progressive. If, however, a form of to be is combined with the past participle, then we form the passive, which isn't a tense, but um, in the example here we have V, W cars are made in Wolfsburg. Mechthild, uh, what would that be in German? VW uh, Autos werden in Wolfsburg hergestellt. Thank you very much, Mechthild. Now we come to combinations forming considerable chains. That's where we might get a little confused. Um, don't forget, we establish the basic tense at the beginning of the chain, whether present, past, conditional, or future. And then we just consider what combinations we have. In the example, I have been, we have already present perfect. Now, being here is itself an auxiliary verb, combined with ing. Therefore, we have progressive and continuous. So, altogether, we have the present perfect continuous. They will, we know from the very start, it's the future, have been waiting here for two hours will future. Have is an auxiliary verb combined with the past participle, therefore we have perfect. Been is an auxiliary verb combined with ing, therefore we have continuous. 
Altogether we have future perfect continuous. Uh, Mechthild, how would you say that in German? Wir werden dort seit zwei Stunden uh, gewartet haben. Thank you very much. Uh, the work would have been done, would is conditional, have been uh, perfect, but after a form of be we have the past participle, and therefore a passive form. We have therefore conditional perfect in the passive. Make sure what is that in German? Ja, die Arbeit uh, wäre geleistet worden. Thank you very much. So, now it's your turn. Let's look at these sentences and you tell me what the tense is. It would not have been so bad. Who's going to help us there? Mechthild? Uh, would conditional have been, that is perfect, conditional perfect? Yes, you can also say a conditional too. Um, what about um, Jacques? If he had seen a doctor immediately, uh, add is read and passed, and then combined with seen, we have passed perfect. Very good. Cosmo, what about the next one? I was watching TV when the phone rang. They were, or oh, past tense, of be, combined with ing, progressive. Past progressive, correct, or past continuous. And of course, rang, rang is a uh, past tempo. Good. Um, Mary did not like the show. Uh, the Venerable Dalai Kama, uh, that is simple, uh, uh, did, past simple, no question, correct, did can only be past simple, and it's also the first verb, a red verb, yes. Um, Mechthild, where does her husband work? Yeah, does uh, is automatically present simple, third person singular, very good. And what will you be doing this time um, tomorrow? That's rather a complicated one. Um, what about uh, Cosmo? Uh, well, here's future. B, auxiliary verb, combined with ing, that is progressive. Uh, so it is altogether future progressive. Good, good. Do you use these tenses in outer space? Uh, time different outer space. Thank you very much. Jill um, was not at home last night. Um, method. It is not past progressive because there is no ing. It is simple. Past of to be, past simple to be, correct. Did, oh, we all know that, did, past simple. Yes, did is automatically past simple. Have the letters been sent off? Um, the Venerable um, Dalai Kama, uh, have red verb present, yes. Combined with um, past participle, that is, um, Present perfect, but also sent off. Past possible after the form of B is passive. So that is present perfect in the passive. Good. Uh, what's that in German? Ja, sind die Briefe abgeschickt worden? Uh, thank you very much. Yes, they were sent off yesterday. Um, Jacques, they were, uh, that is uh, past. Uh, form of past participle after to be is passive, that is past tense, simple, uh, in passive. Very good, and see you're all learning very well indeed.
Well, that closes the lesson for today, uh, just ahead of the weekend. I hope you enjoy the weekend before your next lesson. Um, Jacques, where are you going? Uh, I will stay with friends. Good. Mechthild? Yes, I uh, will uh, go on a uh, walking trip, wandern. Very good. And the um, venerable Dalai Kama, I go and meditate the whole time. And Cosmo, uh, I will have a weekend in Mars. Thank you. So, wherever you're going, have a great time and uh, practice your tenses. Don't get tense about the future. Thank you.